So behind me here, I have a 2016 Cascadia. Not a bad ride. It seems like some people can make money with these things. I'm, I personally, I'm, I'm just not a Freightliner guy. I never have been since I was a little kid. I just can't wrap my mind around it. But I am going to be selling this thing on consignment. Problem is, it has an active code. It's uh, got an air restriction problem, which is causing it to derate. And we got to get this thing fixed before we could sell it. We got to figure out what's going on. So on this video, I thought we'd go over some of the things you can look at when you have a problem like this. So you can find the obvious problem, and maybe you'll be able to fix it yourself or what kind of trouble you're in when you go to a shop. So you're probably gonna need to go to a shop anyway because with these modern marvels, these wonderful trucks, they got to be hooked up to a computer at some point probably clear everything out but with that we're going to take a look at it okay so you can see it says active faults right one so we press the button here plus and then we'll see what it says air intake system problem detected d rate spn 102 fmi 18 and so we know it's got some kind of problem getting air into the engine. So let's take a look at some stuff. Since this is an air intake issue, we're going to start with the first thing, which is our air filter. And judging by the way some people maintain their stuff, it wouldn't be surprising a lot of times if these things are just clogged up. So we need a screwdriver. Take out the screw because it only looks like one is in there. Take out the screw and go ahead and check out this air filter. All right, we'll just take this one screw out. Stays in there pretty good. All right. So that air filter looks pretty good. Nothing, uh, nothing bad enough to be causing a, an airflow restriction. We'll take a look inside of there also. Looks good. We'll put it back. So on this side, you can see the air comes through this air filter, then comes through the turbo and then back into the engine. But we wanna make sure none of these are leaking. That's kind of a common thing for them to go bad. These all look fairly new and solid. Nothing's loose. We're good on that, I think. So this is the front of it. We wanna maybe run the truck and see if any airs clearly leaking out somewhere also make sure nothing's all clogged up but this looks pretty good this is for the AC I'm just touching it because I see it's all green looks like they put dye inside the AC and so this is where it's leaking out that's probably why the AC don't work but that's a problem for a different day right now we're just looking at this air problem so there doesn't seem like there's a real problem with the fresh air coming in we need to now look and see if there's any problem with the exhaust that's going back into the engine. Because yes, your exhaust doesn't just go out your tailpipe, it actually goes back into the engine. That's Honestly, it's still hard for me to understand how that's a good idea. Uh, even if you think of it, is it's supposed to be better for the environment. It doesn't seem like it's better for the environment because these trucks don't last very long. Many of these trucks don't last as long as my iPhone. So maybe if politicians had to you know, breathe in their own exhaust, they'd get it. It is what it is. So we need to go ahead and look at the EGR. We need to look at the EGR valve. We need to look at what's happening in that system. This is where that common sense comes in pretty handy. There was a heat shield on here and a heat shield on there and I took it off so you can see all the piping really easy. Well, you can see where the exhaust comes out of the engine, right? Comes out of the engine, goes down into the turbo and then shoots out to the street. There's also another pipe right here that goes back upstairs up to the engine. It goes back inside the intake, okay? And it's on that that we want to check for a valve that will control how much of that gas is going in and out. And we want to make sure that valve is loose. Can it move around? We want to make sure those connections to that actuator are good. And this one's moving around pretty good. If that was seized, maybe the actuator wasn't allowing it to turn or just the, the EGR valve itself was, was stuck. 
that would be where we would want to start our repair. This one's moving around fine. And that is an awkward position to be in. As we go along, we want to make sure all the connections and the clamps are good, not leaking. They're on there the right way. We want to make sure that's all good as we follow it around to see if there's any leaks where it's causing this problem. After that exhaust goes through that valve, it goes up into this right here, this thing. It's called an EGR cooler. It's got to cool the gas down before it sends it back through the engine. And that has coolant running through it. And so those things can go bad and then you start getting coolant that's mixing in with the exhaust and that causes uh, different issues on the other side so that could actually be one of our problems so we haven't found anything yet now we're gonna go ahead and dig into stuff and see if we can find something this is the other side of the engine this is where we can do a lot of different things to figure out what's going on we got an important sensor here we've got an important sensor there this pipe is the exhaust from the egr cooler it goes across the front of the engine down and mixes in with our fresh air mixes in with that before it goes into the engine so we can take this pipe off and we can go ahead and see about a lot of different things if i was just buying a truck i think i'd probably take this pipe off and just check it out and see what's going on inside it's really simple to take off there's only three bolts here one there and then you loosen that up first we'll take this one off All right, we got those bolts out. Now let's loosen up this clamp real quick. Okay. Oh, okay. Come on, Sally. Come on. There you go. Be careful. So you can see this isn't that bad. It's got you know, your, your normal carbon, but this is exhaust. This is coming straight from the exhaust. So it's coming into your engine. So it's gonna have this kind of stuff in it. You imagine uh, if you were just to look at a normal tailpipe, it's full of all this carbon. Well, that's what's going back into your engine. So the thing we wanna look out for is big buildup. This one's not, not bad at all. And we also want to look for coolant coming through that pipe. So we'll stick a flashlight in there and take a look at it. There's a bunch of coolant in there. What, what happens is, is that it mixes with the carbon and it starts to build its stuff up. It starts to get chunky. All right, so I got a flashlight here. Take a look inside. Looking inside here, everything looks pretty good. I don't see any coolant. I don't see any restrictions. So I think we're pretty good on that. Now I want to start checking sensors. This is an important sensor. This is an important sensor. This is called the Delta. It's got uh, a little tab you push on it. You unlock it, pull the harness down. All right. These two little bolts, 10 millimeter, should come right out of there. Now, pull this off. All right, it's got two little O-rings on there. We don't want to lose those, but it doesn't look too bad. Not too bad at all. So this is the top of it, and this is something you want to keep clean anyway. But we'll take a zip tie and run it through these holes, these orifices. I think that's what Detroit even calls for, is just run zip ties in there. But these holes are not straight, so you can't use like a drill bit or a screwdriver and jam it in there. All right, let's go ahead and run the zip tie through here and see what we got. Oh, yeah. This is pretty good. Okay. The other way. Get in there. Get in there. Oh. Okay. Is pretty good. Now I'm going to put this all back together since it doesn't look bad. Clean 
clamp away. I'll put this bolt, just get it started. These three. Bomb. Now. Good. Now we do want to check this one sensor right here. This is a pressure sensor. I want to see how it's doing. Where are you at? Get down here. It's... Okay. And that don't look bad, does it? That don't look bad at all. Filthy or nothing. All right. So we'll put it back together. Well, unfortunately I didn't find an obvious culprit. My sensors don't look all clogged up. One of them could be bad. It could be a bad sensor in there. Uh, the pipe looks pretty clean. The uh, EGR cooler doesn't look like it's leaking. The EGR valve is moving around fine. So honestly, it's probably at the point where it is good to have it hooked up to a computer where they can run tests and, and see what's going on with it. That's the reality of our modern trucks. So I uh, hope that helps you out. Maybe you found an obvious thing going on, but really a lot of this stuff is something you should probably be doing routinely anyway, if you're gonna go this route. So I hope it was at least fun. Man, I hope it helps out if you're doing something like that. But for now, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching the Ned Stevens channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if by all means, if I mess something up or totally miss something, please leave a comment below. It might just help somebody out who's trying to find a solution to the problem. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.